Welcome back to the wood shop, my friends. Which side is the... Uh, we're on that side. Welcome back to the wood shop, my friends. Um, today, in this episode, we're gonna be making one of these. This is a fully functional lever action pen. This is a huge seller for us, um, as are all of our really nice pens. Uh, this one in particular, though, people really seem to love. It's got like an antique brass finish, uh, desert ironwood, hand turned here in the shop grip. Extremely comfortable, extremely cool. Um, so we're gonna take you along and show you how we do this. Um, yeah, before we get started on that though, let me thank you guys. Um, I got way more views on the last video than I ever thought I would, which is super cool. Um, we've got, we got over 100 subscribers, which is wild. So now we've got a custom YouTube URL, which is super cool. Um, and I'm getting so into making these videos or the idea of making these videos that your guy went out and bought an $11 top of the line bottom barrel lapel mic just for you guys. So hopefully the sound is a little bit better. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead. We'll not waste any more time. We'll get started. I'll show you guys how we make these. So the first thing that we need to clarify is that we do not make any of the hardware for our pens. We buy hardware kits, if this will focus, that are pre-made. Um, we don't have the means or the time or the energy or quite frankly the patience to do this. This would be an incredible amount of work. So we buy these pre-made. Um, what we're doing today is we're turning the actual pen grip portion, which is made out of wood. So where we start is we're gonna set this stuff aside because that all comes later when we're done turning the middle section and we need a pen blank. So for these lever action pens, we use desert ironwood. This stuff is beautiful. Um, it's incredibly hard. Anybody that's worked with it knows what I'm talking about. So the very first thing that we need to do is we need to take this center tube right here. This is what the pen is built around and we need to, there's nothing special about this. We just need to mark how long of a piece we need to cut on this ironwood. I like to leave about a millimeter of overhang on either side, just so when we're done we can sand it down, uh, get everything flush. So that's step one. Now we need to go over to the bandsaw and cut this off. All right, so we got our pen blank piece cut here. Now the next step is we have our tube and we have our pen blank. We need to drill a hole in the, all the way through this so that we can super glue this pen tube in there. Um, and I'll show you guys how we do that right here. I use a pen vise. Um, it works wonderfully. You put this in, tighten it up, and then you can drill straight through without having to hold. It's, you know, it's dangerous to sit there and try to drill with a drill press while holding this. You can slip and you can chew your fingers up. So let me show you this pen vise real quick. All right, so shake all that off. This is a pen vise. And what this is, you can see right here, you can grip your pen blank in there. I use this for a bunch of stuff, not just pen blanks. Um, it comes in incredibly handy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this pen blank right here. Although I'll try to do this to where you guys can see it. And then we twist this. Tighten it up. Now your pen blank is stuck in there. So when you turn on your drill press, you can go straight down into it. So we're gonna raise this up. Oh, we're gonna raise the camera up first. There we go. We're gonna raise our table up. All right, we got that locked in. Turn on our light, turn on our laser, make sure that we are pretty centered. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you wanna be as close as you can. All right, now we're just gonna drill straight through this piece. All 
All right, so we got our pen blank drilled out. See that this now slides perfectly in there. So the next step is we before we start turning it, we need to attach this in there. The way that I do that is just with medium CA glue. Put it in, let it sit for about two minutes, and then you'll be good to go. All right. So to get this to stick in here, the first thing that we want to do, uh, these brass center tubes are slick. You don't want them slick. You want something for the CA glue to stick to. So I'm going to use just some 150 grit sandpaper. You don't have to go crazy with this. This is all I do is I literally take this right here, scuff this up a little bit, and all those tiny little scratches that you're putting in there are going to allow that CA glue to get in and dry just going to hold a lot better. Once that's nice and scuffed up, all the way around, there we go, beautiful. You can see, see how it's scuffed up right there? That's exactly what we're looking for. So we're going to take some CA glue. Uh, use medium CA glue, definitely don't use thin CA glue. It will probably dry before you can even push this entire tube into your blank right there. So we start it off and make sure to twist while you're pushing this into. That twisting movement is important to help spread that CA glue around. We've got a little bit of CA glue on the end there. And we're just gonna wipe that off. And I'm just gonna let this sit uh, probably, I don't know, two, three minutes should be fine. Um, this is this is all dry now. You can see on this side how that's flush. That's the side that we pushed in from. On this side, you can see that it's setting in there a little bit. So we need to just uh, before we start turning this, we need to sand this down to get it to sit completely flush. So we're gonna do that now. I'm just gonna use my <clears throat> little bench top sander. I'll show you guys how that works. We got that to work. Hopefully you guys can hear me with this mask on. That side is now flush. That side's now flush. So next thing that we need to do is we need to set this <clears throat> onto our lathe. Let me take that off for a minute. Okay. So this is our lathe right here. This right here is our pen mandrel that we're going to use. Um, but as you can see right here, the mandrel itself if it'll focus, there we go, is much smaller than the diameter of this. So if you were to put this on, there's a lot of play in there, you wouldn't be able to turn it. So we use um, these little metal bushings. Uh, if you buy a pen kit, it'll tell you what size bushings that you need. And what this does is you slide that on, and then oops, right here you can see that that's going to line up perfectly and slide over there. So we get the second one here, we'll put this on, push this onto the other side, and now there's no play. That's locked into place, and the neat thing about these bushings as well is depending on which pen kit you get, um, when you use these metal bushings, they're the exact same size as the pen hardware will be. So while you're turning this down, you know exactly where you need to stop on the end for it to be a seamless, flush, smooth transition from wood to metal hardware on the pen. So we do that. Gonna lock our tailstock in. Press that down as hard as humanly possible. Tighten this guy up. That applies some clamping pressure. Lock that into place. And now we're good to go. So when you guys are making pens, um, a lot of people might think that pen making is incredibly safe. Treat it as if you're turning a four foot long piece of wood. 
I mean, when you're in the shop, it's just, it's good practice to act as though every single thing in the shop can kill you, which is what I do. So um, I'm turning, I'm gonna put a mask on. If I come out here and I just turn one single pen, there are times where I won't put a mask on if it's gonna be real quick, but I'm out here all day long, so I do wear this. Gotta protect your lungs. Gotta clean the camera off. There we go. Um, a lot of these hardwoods that I work with are extremely toxic um, if you inhale them. So it's definitely good to try to prevent that anytime that you can. And then also, you're gonna want some sort of a face shield. Might seem silly, it's not silly when you have a piece of wood that's spinning 5,000 times per minute come flying off and hit you in the eye. So you don't need anything special. This is $10 at Home Depot or something. It's a 3M. Put it on, if anything hits you, it's hopefully not gonna go through that. So, so when we go to turn this, anytime that you're turning something, Basically, you want this thing going as fast as you can get it to go while you're actually turning and cutting wood off. Um, once you got the wood turned and you go to start sanding and finishing, you want to slow it down. But for right now, we have this set at the top speed that it'll go. There's no single way to turn something, especially pens. They're so simple. Um, but I'll show you guys the tools that I use for pen turning typically. Um, obviously, you'll use a bowl gouge. This is what you use to take that square piece of wood and turn it down into a circle. I'll use a little spindle gouge here just to kind of shape it. And then sometimes depending on the, the shape of the pen that I'm making, there are times where I will use these angled chisels. Um, these are great too when you get to the end of the project because that angled chisel, you can just smooth it out really well. It cuts down on a lot of the sanding. So we're gonna go ahead and start turning this. I'll do a little time lapse to show you guys the process. I'm gonna start with the bowl gouge, then I'll go to the spindle gouge, and then I will finish with this angled chisel.
There she is. That's incredibly smooth already. We are going to sand this down. But that's how fast it goes. Um, you know, that was maybe two minutes of turning. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to turn the speed down real quick because now that we've gotten that thing turned down to shape, we want it to go as slow as possible. Uh, speed and sandpaper paper does not mix well. You'll destroy your sandpaper in a matter of seconds if you have this thing turning at the highest RPMs that it'll go. And then when we go to finish this, uh, speed, friction, and super glue really do not go well together. I have nearly lit uh, shop rags on fire. I have melted the nitrile gloves that I use and they have stuck to my fingers because they get so hot. So we go very slow with the finishing process. Sorry, I'm just getting this thing locked into place. Gotta get this. I don't have a fancy adjustable like variable speed lathe. I have to do this all by hand every single time that I want to change it. So there we go, we got it locked in. And I'll show you guys what we do next. So we're going to be sanding up through five different grits just to start. I have this uh, sandpaper dispenser with these rolls mounted right next to the lathe so that I can just reach over and grab it. We have 150 grit, 240 grit, 320 grit, 400 grit, and 600 grit. We're going to run through all of those before we start the finishing process. So you can see it looks a little bit cloudy. It looks cloudy, it's incredibly smooth, but it looks cloudy because of those scratches that are still on there. So what we're gonna do next is, um, we're gonna apply the finish to this now. The way that I do my pen finishes is with CA glue. This is kind of the standard for anybody that makes pens, is to use a thin CA glue and just do multiple coats. So I'm grabbing nitrile gloves because you don't want to you don't want to work with thin CA glue without those. You'll glue your hands together faster than you can even react to because that stuff dries so quickly. Um, and then I'm just going to use one of these blue towels. Now the important thing when you're doing finishing like this is you want it to be a lint-free towel. Um, paper towel, shop rag, whatever you want. Uh, just make sure that it doesn't have a lot of lint because that lint will get stuck in there and it'll just ruin your pen. So I'm going to put our gloves on and what we also need to do before we start finishing this is we need to swap out the bushings on the lathe. Um, we use those metal bushings in order to turn our pen down to size. Um, let me switch you. That is not what we want with finishing because that CA glue will glue your wood to these metal bushings um, which will result in many curse words and much frustration so what we do is we take these little uh, I forget what those are made out of they're almost like a plastic but the CA glue doesn't stick to them like they would, like it would with uh, metal bushings. So we take these and we use these instead. Same principle, you're holding the piece in place. We're still gonna lock it in with this. Lock that tailstock down, twist this, tighten it up, 
lock that in. So everything is the same. Uh, the speed is the same. We're working with the slowest speed that we can get. Um, but it's now wedged in between these two. So it's not gonna stick when you're done finishing. You can just pull it right off. So the way that I do finishing is we just ran through those five grits of sandpaper, 150 all the way up to 600. Now what we're gonna do is thin CA glue, spray activator. I'm gonna put on three layers of thin CA glue before we even start doing any more sanding. Uh, spraying it with this activator in between, giving it about 10 seconds just to dry. That's all it needs if you use this. So after we get three layers on, I'll put the fourth layer on, and then we're gonna start using these. These are micro abrasives. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but they're little sanding pads. So they start at, I think this one is 1500, uh, 1500 grit, and it goes through nine different steps all the way up to 12,000 grit. Uh, it's just glass smooth when you get done with it. But the way that we do this is we apply thin CA glue, hit it with the activator, wait for it to dry, sand with one, and then repeat that cycle uh, however many, nine, 10 times, however many of these there are. So you're building up layers of CA glue, but in between putting more CA glue on, you're sanding all of those tiny little scratches down um, until there's nothing left and it's completely smooth. And it, get, it creates a real thick, um, indestructible finish on it. Like hardened CA glue is super hard. So we're gonna do that now. I'll show you guys how we run through that process. Side note, before we get started, always make sure that you have this pulled down. Wipe it off, make sure that you can see you do not want to work with thin CA glue and something that's spinning. Um, don't make that mistake. Be very, very uh, cautious with this thin CA glue. When you have it spinning that fast, this CA glue is like thinner than water um, and the chemical reaction from it happens so fast when you have um, that friction because the way that we're gonna do it is we're gonna drip some of this on while with our other hand, we're holding this rag underneath the towel or underneath the pen. So that spreads it around evenly, but that little bit of friction from rubbing this towel causes it to heat up. You can get it to smoke. Uh, it could light on fire. You know, like I said, even when I double this up, fold this over, so I've got eight layers in between, there are times where I have dripped CA glue on, held it for just a split second too long, feel the heat, pull it off, and I've got nitrile glove stuck to my finger, just burning. So uh, you don't want that. You also don't want a little bit of that CA glue to flick up and get you in the eye because that's a real quick way to uh, blind yourself. So always make sure that this is down. If any of that CA glue flicks off, it's gonna hit you in the protective layer right there.
right. So that's how that process goes. But as you can see, very worth it. This thing is now incredibly smooth. It brings out all of that gorgeous color in the wood. So we're gonna pop this thing off and then I'll show you guys how we assemble these pens. So just to highlight what I was telling you guys earlier about that thin CA glue, um, I do this every single day. I've done, I can't even begin to guess how many of these pens I've done in my life. Um, and still a professional, if you'll see right here, right there, it heated up and burned straight through the glove and now I'm, we'll find out together if this glove is even gonna come off. Cause that is, yeah, come on. Uh, yeah, see that? It's burned straight onto my skin. So be very careful when working with thin CA glue. Uh, that stuff is no joke. I mean, this is nitrile glove and it just melted it and stuck it straight to my finger there. So we'll worry about that later. But here we have it. This right here is our finished, it's got some sawdust on it, but our finished uh, grip portion. So the way that we do construction, you can buy a fancy pen press. I don't have that kind of money. So I use this. This is the same exact clamps that we use to clamp up our cutting boards uh, with just a very short length of pipe. And this is how we do this. Basically, it, it does the same exact function as a pen press does. A pen press is a nice little contraption. It's got an arm that goes out the back. You fold that arm over and down and it pushes a rod out to squeeze everything together. Uh, you don't need that. You can do this with a vise. This is essentially what this is as well. That's a vise. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our pen section right here. This is what we just turned and we need to put all of our hardware into it. So first off, decide which end you want to be. I'm, yeah, I'm going to have that be the front end. So we're going to put this in here, hold it in place, slide your back piece forward until it touches. And then we're just going to use the twist function right here. And we're just going to start twisting and go slow because you don't want to press a piece in sideways or anything. But if you look right there, right, watch right here, you can see that piece being pressed into the pen. And you don't want to over tighten it either. You just want to press it in until it sits flush. So now, full focus, yeah, there we go that's pressed flush into there now. So then, we're gonna take our back piece and that needs to be pressed into there like that. So we're gonna do the same thing, open this up a little bit, pull it back, start twisting, make sure that everything is lined up in there. to start and if you watch this back right here see that is being pressed into there now press it until it sits flush and then pull it back now for this particular pen um, that's all you have to do this piece right here and this is actually a legitimate lever action pen you pull the lever and it ejects the pen tube and then you pull it again and it retracts it. So that piece twists right onto the end there, like so. This piece is gonna slide into here, like that. And then you have your piece right here that goes onto there. Now that we've got this all in place, I'm gonna untwist this and I'm gonna press the end piece onto here. That's the final piece. We're gonna slowly press that in. Twist 
twist her around a little bit, make sure that everything lines up perfectly. Sometimes the clamping pressure, depending on where you're trying to clamp it from, can do it a little bit sideways. So when that happens, I just, like you just saw me do, I'll back it off a little bit and rotate it. Put that went in there perfectly. So now you've got your end piece here. This looks like a shell casing as by design. Slide this guy in. And somewhere, I happen to lose the spring. Let me find that real quick. That is a Christmas miracle, my friends. Our little spring did not fall into the trash can that is directly underneath me. Somehow it happened to fall to the side. So let's twist this off. We're gonna put our spring right here on the end. Push that down. Twist everything back together. Get this little piece of wax off the end. And that is a fully functional lever action pen. And you can see that wood is absolutely beautiful. I think this iron wood pairs perfectly with this antique looking hardware. So that's it. That's how we make one of these lever action pens, but the actual process of pen making is about the same as all of our pens, just with a difference in the hardware used. All right, y'all, we did it. We got a fully functional pen right here. These things are so cool. I love these things. I'm super glad that everybody else appreciates these too. We've sold a ton of these. They're just beautiful. Um, so thank you for coming along. Uh, we'll do another video soon. I'm not sure what we're gonna do next. Um, we still have a ton of stuff that we have to get caught up on, but we have a ton of stuff that we're about to launch here pretty soon as well um, in our online store. So I'm really excited about that, but it is a tremendous amount of work and we have two babies teething. So sleep is a thing of the distant past. Um, so yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.